In NASCAR, there are many teams that come and go. Some that last many years, to some that last a couple of races. From partnership that lasted one season, to partnerships that have lasted 30 years. NASCAR has fairly seen as many different team combos as there could possibly have been. And today, we're going to talk about a forgotten combo in 2010 between a former Cup Series champion and a NASCAR team owner from the 1980s and 90s. Let's talk about Stavola Labonte Racing. In late 2009, it was announced that former NASCAR team owner Bill Stavola, who co-owns the Stavola Brothers Racing Team from 1983 to 1999, and two-time NASCAR Cup Series champion Terry Labonte would be forming a cup team for the 2010 season. The team would be called Stavola Labonte Racing. In early 2010, it was reported that the team would attempt three races, the fall races at Richmond, Charlotte, and Texas driving the number 10 Chevrolet. Cars and engines would be supplied by Richard Childress Racing, and Gander Mountain would be sponsoring all three races. The team's first race was at Richmond with Terry Labonte. It was a tall task as 48 cars were on the entry list, and the Stavola team had no owner points, meaning they had to make the show on time. The two practice sessions didn't show impressive results, as the number 10 of Labonte was 44th in the first practice and 45th in the second practice. Although the number 10 Labonte improved a lot from practice, it was not enough in qualifying as he was only 40th on the charts, being the last car bumped from the field. Labonte couldn't use his past champion's provisional as ironically his brother Bobby had to use it for himself to get his number 9 car into the race. Despite the DNQ, Labonte and Stavola were still determined to make their first start. So they went over to the 55 team for Prism Motorsports with driver Mike Bliss and made a deal to have Labonte take over the number 55 machine and Gander Mountain decals would be placed on the car. As for Bliss, he happily stepped aside as the 55 was scheduled to start and park the race anyway. The race wasn't going very well as by lap 140, number 55 Labonte was running in 40th place. The last car running in the field, unfortunately just three laps later on lap 143, Labonte blew a right front tire going into the wall hard in turn three. Being a car in the wall and the caution comes out, the 55 car, Terry Labonte, and that's going to change a lot of things. Well, they will change a lot. That really helped Ryan Newman and Joey Logano, guys close to getting ready to go lap down. Jamie McMurray, that was a really good deal for those guys, but bad deal for Terry Labonte. Yeah, it helped those guys because under the green flag, they were going to have to try a two-tire stop, well, Rusty, bad, to get track position. Now they can take their time, line up, sink their pit stops, get four fresh tires and fuel and move forward. With this long green run, I was kind of waiting for this. Sometimes in these long runs yeah. at Richmond, we see that brake heat that Tim Brewer talked about earlier get to somebody's right front tire. Yeah, that heat that heats up and it breaks that bead just like Tim's talking about inside that tire, blows those right fronts, and uh, Terry got in the wall pretty hard there. And so with the uh, and uh, another look at Terry Labonte. Yeah, you see him blow that right front tire. He just clobbers that wall. And uh, it's like Tim said, brake heat. And brake heat usually caused with a bad handling car. If the car's not handling good, you're using a lot of brakes to stop it. And that's what happens right there. All right, so the uh, two-time champ making a limited return to racing this year. Uh, not having the kind of night or weekend he was hoping for. So here Labonte was okay, but unfortunately had to retire from the race. A disappointing end to the Stavola Labonte's first race. It was announced on October 11th that Terry's brother Bobby would drive the number 10 entry at the other two events at Charlotte and Texas. It was a tall task for the Stavola team once again as 49 cars were entered at Charlotte and the team had to make it on time. At Charlotte, however, the speed was noticeably better with Bobby behind the wheel as the number 10 of Labonte was 29th in the first practice, 34th in the second practice, and 28th in happy hour. Qualifying showed the same speed as Labonte was able to make the show on time, qualifying 30th on the grid. The race was a very impressive performance as Bobby ran in the top 30 the entire race and through attrition finished an impressive 22nd and only one lap down. Charlotte was a big confidence booster for the organization and the team hoped to continue that momentum into their last scheduled race of the season at Texas. Coming into Texas, it was once again going to be a tall task as 49 cars again had entered, meaning the number 10 of Labonte would have to qualify in on time. Like Charlotte, the speed was prominent as the number 10 of Labonte was 21st in the first practice, but slowed down a lot in the final practice, placing only 33rd. Qualifying showed similar speed from practice as Labonte was to safely put the 10 car in the show, slotting in 31st on the grid. 
The race went well for Labanias, although they struggled for speed throughout the race. Attrition and staying out of trouble kept the number 10 on track and finished in 30th place. Again, only one lap down. Another confidence booster for the Stavola Labani team as they look to build from their last race in 2010 into a bigger part time effort for 2011. At the end of 2010, Terry Labani hoped to secure enough sponsorship for Stavola Labani Racing to run 15 races in the 2011 Cup season. Unfortunately, the money never materialized and the team became dormant by the conclusion of 2010. It was the last appearance of Bill Stavola in the sport, and Terry Labani would go on to move over to go fast racing for 2011 until his eventual retirement at the end of 2014. Bobby Labani continued to race full-time in the Cup Series up until 2013, and then finally retired from the series at the conclusion of the 2016 Talladega race. Stavola Labani's total statistics were this. Three attempts, made two of them, with two different drivers, an average start of 26, an average finish of 30.5, $205,051 in purse money, and a final owner points position of 49. Stavola Labani Racing was a blink-and-you-missed-it team. The idea was great, and the performance was there. But unfortunately, with many NASCAR teams, financial troubles derailed all the plans. Would this team have been? We will never know. But I hope you guys enjoyed learning about this short-lived team. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe for more, and you guys have a great day. Thank you.